So, and if you can just yell real loud, you don't have to do the stand up to the microphone, okay? <laughs> but no shy people allowed here, okay? Deal? Deal. Deal. Who's up first? <laughs> Alright, I'll see you later. <laughs> Shortest panel ever. I like how they said it was a panel. They're like, oh, you have two panels. Then I was like, oh, I'm not supposed to do the pages. And I was like, this isn't a panel, the table. So. <laughs> Nobody else but me? Weird. Um, yes? Waiting for you to love it. Thank you. Love it. She just name dropped my last single. So um, I, uh, I'm a musician. I grew up playing classical piano and orchestral percussion. I sang opera first, and then I was like, I can't even sit through an opera. What am I going to do? Um, and then, uh, but I still make music. And uh, the last piece, Waiting for Godot, I produced a music video as well. So you can see all of that on the interwebs. It's a thing called the interweb, in case you've never heard of it. Um, yeah, and thank you for watching it. You know, I, it's funny because when I decided to make it, I was like, I'm making this good and I don't care if anybody likes it. I'm just going to make it my way. And now it's making film festival rounds. And I'm like, well, that's nice that people like it, though. So I'm kind of a hypocrite, it's basically what I just figured out. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. As a, a multifaceted, multidisciplinary artist with music and acting, do you find yourself uh, employing the skills of one and together and interest of both, and does it enhance the enjoyment of your work? Yes. Um, I would say that it's, you know, you see actors who are oftentimes good at other things as well, like Viggo Mortensen is like somehow an amazing painter, and everybody kind of has something else that maybe they did in a past life that they do now, that they can still do now. And um, I truly believe that if you're an artist who has created a process and taken the time to become very good at what your chosen craft is, you can apply that process as a template to other arts. And um, I definitely break down scenes the same way that I do classical piano pieces and you know find the peaks and valleys and valleys and hear the, the rhythm and you know it's all really is really the same to me. It's storytelling in a way, you know? Yeah, it's very much the same. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Director Fury. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, I mean, I think it's pretty obvious I've chosen acting, you know, um, and I have no time to make music the way that I would had I ended up being a musician. Um, oh, that's hard. I think at this point in my life, music has become therapeutic. Um, so instead of going to therapy sessions, I just work my shit out in music. <laughs> <laughs> and I do though, you know, uh, if I have a writing session with a writer, I'm highly collaborative, you know, I run my music project on my own, I'm the producer, and um, there's no answering to some, that's, that's the one thing that's annoying. So when I was like going after different producers to collaborate with, a lot of times they would be like, great, who do I talk to to get in touch with you? Like, who's the producer that you, who's your manager, who's your, that shit pisses me off. I'm like, just because I'm a girl, and I'm on a show you may have seen, you don't think that I run my shit. <laughs> but then I get over it, and then, yeah. Um, but, uh, what was the point? What, is, <laughs> what do you like? What do I like more? Um, yeah, because, because um, I'm fairly autonomous, it's impossible to find any time. And um, so anytime I, uh, I actually go through with it, it becomes this huge big thing. And, and I mean, even Waiting for Godot is like almost five minutes long. It's got three distinct music uh, modalities to it. And it's, um, 
just like a choir breakdown, you know, it's like, who does that? I don't know, I just, but I just felt like it needed it, so, um, uh, but yeah, so that was my, now I remember. So if I'm in a writing session with a writer, um, oftentimes, I'm, the experience in, in my writer's room is, is much more about what are we trying to say, what haven't we, what haven't you said in a song before, what are you embarrassed to reveal, you know, uh, they're, they're therapeutic, they're really therapy sessions, you know. How does that make you feel? Yeah. And how do you feel about that? And then we put it into a song. Yeah. Go for it. Um, describe your performance in The League on FX. <laughs> does anybody watch The League here? Yeah, some hands. Mm -hmm. um, so that show is improvised. We have a skeleton script. So when I show up to set, sometimes they give you sides, so it's like the packet of pages that you're going to shoot for the day. It's normally like a page. And it says, in this scene, Andre walks in, he's mad about this. Shiva walks in, she's pissed off at everyone for not changing the name of the league. She curses everyone and leaves. That's it. And then we turn those into these long-winded scenes and then I mean they just edited into fruition it's craziness and these guys and Katie are insanely good and they come up with stuff that you just can't not laugh at so oh god you gotta really bring it when you show up because you have no idea what you're in for I just signed off on the gag reel <laughs> The stuff that we couldn't air <laughs> is on this gag reel. <laughs> I just can't wait for you to see it. It'll be on the DVD. <laughs> Get that. Go ahead. 